Well, hey everybody, John Ritland here, and here are 25 WrestleMania matches that you need to see. In my personal opinion, this is just a list based on which ones I found the most entertaining from either just entertainment, you know, factor, crowd interaction, in-ring storytelling, in-ring work, or a variety of every single one. How great, you know, just everybody's chemistry was and how they took everybody on a roller coaster ride. So yeah, there's going to be a mix of a whole bunch. There's going to be a few technical classics in here, some entertaining, you know, just crazy, you know, craziness and stuff like that. And yeah, there's going to be plenty I left off. I'm not saying these are 25, my favorite 25, you know, WrestleMania matches ever, but still, I really did enjoy, you know, making this list. I encourage you guys to leave in the comments what you guys think. And I will also have a couple more WrestleMania themed countdowns, ranking videos up Sometime either this week or into next week. And yeah, we're gearing up for WrestleMania 35. As much as I have an issue with the current WWE product and being too much of it and it being kind of blasé, I always get geared up for WrestleMania. Yes, Starrcade did it first and other companies did their big Super Bowl events. <clears throat> but WrestleMania is a show a ton of people fucking watch. So let's talk about some of the stuff from the recent past and in the, you know, in the past, like way, way long ago. Back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. Not in Jurassic World, hopefully. But anyway, number 25, Sean versus Vince at WrestleMania 22. It was just entertaining to see Vince get the shit beat out of him. And JR's commentary, just, God, JR's commentary. Because JR was brought back after being fired, you know, because he, well, he was fired, but he had to have colon surgery and stuff like that. And then he was brought back by Vince to call Shawn Michaels getting the shit beat out of him. And it was just a street fight. And it was just so funny because... Just JR's commentary just being so pro Shawn Michaels. There's a point where the muscle and fitness thing that Vince McMahon did, the poster, or, you know, the magazine, there was a big old, you know, big old poster version of it, and Shawn actually got it and hit Vince over the head with it. And as he hits him over the head, JR's like, hey, hit him in the head with it. Shawn hits him in the head. JR goes and shove it up his ass. How would that be? I don't know why that's so entertaining, but it just is. It just, it was entertaining. You had the Spirit Squad come out. You had Shane McMahon up here and he got handcuffed and Vince just got a chair cracked over his head I mean good grief that was bad and Shawn Michaels winning going back to his old DX days which would actually you know signal the you know return of DX in 06 mm. but still an entertaining street fight nonetheless no not technical by any stretch of the imagination but my god it was great number 24 Taker versus Brock at Mania 30 he didn't say everything was going to be Great for the right reasons. <sighs> just, mm. I'm going to have another one up 20, you know, 20 uh, WrestleMania matches where the wrong person won. Just spoiler, you know, spoiler that this match is going to be on there. But boy, it's just, if you want to talk about shock and the fact that Vince got the crowd shocked, Brock beating Taker was a big reason why. I mean, why everybody was shocked by WrestleMania 30. I actually tweeted out, I think at that point, I, I think right after Brock beat him, I said, Brock Lesnar just broke Twitter. If you want to create it, you know, create a big monster and everything, even though Brock already was, that was the way to do it, because the streak is one of the few things that we still held dear. Not a great match in ring, but boy was it, boy was it shocking. And it deserves its place as being viewed, even though you know it's coming just the air being just sucked out of like 75,000 people in the Superdome. Just absolutely amazing. Just, it, it was. I still get goosebumps just thinking about it. Let's move on to happier stuff. Number 23, Piper versus Brett at Mania 8. I loved it because it was Roddy actually, yes, he was doing some street fight stuff and whatever, but he was actually wrestling and him and Brett had a great wrestling match. Would Roddy revert to his heel persona? He had the ring bell, he was going to do some stuff, but in the end, Brett was able to beat him for the Intercontinental title. It was a great Intercontinental Championship match, and I did a list of that, you know, a little cheap plug there, as I really enjoyed doing that one. Good, really good match, really good storytelling, especially with Piper having such a tie to the Hart family. This was good stuff. And then we go to number 22, Brock versus Angle at Mania 19. I loved it, uh, the fact that Kurt somehow didn't die you know, or get paralyzed with the, uh, you know, with his, uh, you know, from the neck problems that he had. Brock not dying doing the shooting star press, but before that, even just the, you know, the submissions, the suplexes, 
the storytelling. This did deserve to be in the WrestleMania main event. Even though I would love to have seen Austin and Rock main event for the, you know, for the third Mania. I mean, not the third straight because it was 15, 17. It would have been this one. So there's one in between. The whole point is, watching this, it was great to see two fucking great amateur wrestlers. And that's the thing. A lot of people forget about Brock. Now, I'm not saying that he was Kurt's equal. But boy, was this great. And it was a very WrestleMania-worthy main event. And the fact that both men didn't die, especially Brock doing that shooting star press. It was just really good stuff. Number 21, Brian versus Orton versus Batista at WrestleMania 30. I will argue that the match that Brian had in the beginning of the show with Triple H was a much better wrestling match. This, however, more emotional. We all knew Brian was going to win, but it was like, you know, at against Triple H was like, was he actually going to, were they actually going to be smart enough to put the title on him? And yet, when it was Orton and Batista, the crowd didn't fucking care. They were shitting all over it and everything. And this happened after the streak got broken. I mean, not right after. I think they put the women's match in there and said, hey, ladies, go out there and, you know, try to entertain the crowd now that everybody's soulless. See ya. Um, but they, had, they, you know, Brian was able to get him back into it. And when Brian got the victory, and I mean, I get goosebumps just fucking thinking about it. Um, just find, you know, you know, Batista nailing Orton. Brian, um, you know, with the Batista bomb, and then Brian nailing Batista and everything, and got the and got the yes lock, well, the, the LaBelle lock, because it's a better name for it, because Judo Gene LaBelle should be remembered, even though I don't think a lot of footage of him exists, um, his legacy lives on. Anyway, but the LaBelle lock, you know, the yes lock, and he got Batista to tap out, and just the crowd absolutely going insane, and Brian uh, talking to Connor, you know, Connor, um, uh, Connor the Crusher, I don't actually remember the kid's last name, a poor, poor kid dying of brain cancer. It was, it was so great though. Brian able to win that and just that, that, that just great electric moment of just all the celebration, everybody, and even though there were obviously people still sad about Taker's streak being broken, at least they had on a high note. Now, I mean, again, once it, when it got to Orton, uh, Batista, it was not good, but boy, Brian winning and coming back and doing all that, it was great storytelling. It was really, really good stuff. And then, number 19, Brock vs. Cena, Mania 28. Again, never said that all these matches were going to be technical classics. Cena did help carry Rock, who had not been in the ring competitively that much since WrestleMania 20. Only been in one match at uh, Survivor Series 21, or uh, 2011, rather. <clears throat> one Survivor Series 21, that came up later, no, um, the whole point is, this was actually a really, really great, big fight feel, despite the fact that Machine Gun Kelly was there, and the guy's a goddamn idiot, and I don't understand why the hell anybody thinks that he's any good, they did have Flo Rider there, who I'm not necessarily a big fan of, but at least Flo Rider, you know, actually, I guess, sort of can do stuff, I don't know, I don't like a lot of modern rap, but the whole point is they had, you know, musical introductions. Cena got booed heavily. It was in Miami. Rock got cheered big. And Rock, Rock and Cena just telling a great story. Cena gained overconfident, going for the people's elbow. Rock came to rock bottom. And again, goosebumps, one, two, three. And I remember watching, uh, and it was absolutely insane. Just the explosion from the crowd. Because they were like, I expected Cena to win. I really did. I expected Cena to win and just WWE to go full troll. And maybe have Cena go heel. You probably should have done, but anyway, that was that that was amazing. Rock, watching Rock win was absolutely fantastic. And then we go to number 18. Rock versus Hogan, Mania 18. Shockingly, not you know, just, just 10 years before, we had um Rock and Hogan in what was a match that you take the crowd out of it, the match was fucking rotten. I mean, you you put you put an average crowd there, there is no way that, that match is that good. The crowd was great. The crowd is what did it. Now, I mean, Hogan getting cheered despite being um, a heel and also soon to be found out a racist. But at the time, a heel, um, just in the ring at least, he got absolutely cheered, you know, in the NWO gear. That's why I got that shirt back there. Actually, I love the NWO, WCW incarnation. Not WWE. But the crowd interaction is what made this match. And Rock, you know, switching, going heel and everything, you know, working heel in the match and beating Hogan. It was the right call. I mean, it absolutely should have been. But boy, 
Hogan harking back and probably and having the only good match that he had in WWE in that second WWE run because I he had he never had another better he never had a better match after that. His match with Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam might have been more entertaining, but still, this was really really good though. And Rock winning, perfect, great stuff. The crowd interaction is really what put this match on the list this high. And then we go number seventeen, Jericho versus Shawn at Mania nineteen. Wonderful. It was, you know, younger guy, even though Jericho had been established for about, you know, a number of years, facing off against Shawn Michaels. Could Shawn Michaels capture the Mr. WrestleMania moniker that he had before? Even though I would argue his second run was better than his first run. I would, I would argue that. 2002, 2010, Shawn Michaels' performances were way better than his performances in, you know, the late 80s <clears throat> into, the mid, into the mid and late 90s my personal opinion, but this match was great, it was in Seattle, I wasn't able to go, I said why, I wasn't able to basically go because I couldn't, I couldn't get the tickets because I was in a bad car accident, uh, don't worry, I'm good, mostly, but also just wasn't able to go, however, the match, Jericho, Sean, kind of great pace, uh, Jericho being a full-on dick heel, doing, you know, the poses, that kind of stuff, the one-upmanship, I almost would have liked to have seen Jericho win, but Sean won, and Jericho low blowed him, and that and then, Jer I remember this one comment. I th was it Jericho? I think it was in Jericho's documentary, the sole documentary that they did uh, for him. And he said this look of betrayal as he kind of slid down my body. It's like phrasing, Chris, phrasing. But still, it was actually a really, really good match, and one that I encourage you guys to watch. <clears throat> Number sixteen, Austin versus Rock at Mania seventeen. Is Austin's heel turn? It was Houston, it was a hot crowd, Vince helping Austin, all that, just all the aspects, just watch it. It's a great WrestleMania main event. I really can't say, I mean, I can't necessarily defend the Austin heel turn, <clears throat> shocking as it was, but boy, it was such a great match. Like, just just, just watch it. What, what else can be said about that? What else can be said about WrestleMania 17, honestly? I mean, it's a great, great show. My favorite WrestleMania of all time. Number 15, Kane versus Big Show versus Raven. For the hardcore title of Mania 17. Oh, we're back at Mania 17. One of my favorite matches at WrestleMania ever. If I were to do like a top 50 matches at WrestleMania, this might actually be top 10. Because again, not technically sound, not technically skilled, but just the entertainment, the fact that, <clears throat> um, you know, Raven got like a hose wrapped around his neck and got thrown through a window. Big Show and Kane running through, you know, a wall. And, and... Raven getting on that, you know, that little golf cart-like thing that they have, and ending in this little divot ditch thing where he almost, and not necessarily Raven's fault, but it almost hit the main cables that could have knocked out the power in, in Houston on WrestleMania on the biggest stage. Now, that would have been something else if that had happened, but the match itself is not an, is not a technical classic, but it's entertaining. It's probably my favorite hardcore uh, title match of all time. It just it just had it just had a certain magic to it. it. It was just fun. And then we go to number 14, Angle and Rousey versus Triple H and Stephanie at Mania 34. If you had told me at this time last year, John, in a year you will put this um match on, you know, uh an essential viewing list, I would have said that that's oddly specific, and I don't understand why you guys would think that far ahead. And I also would have called you a liar. And I would have been wrong. This match has had no goddamn right to be as entertaining as it was. It's the best debut match that I've seen in years. I mean, maybe the best debut match ever. Now, is it was it all down to Rousey? Sure, Rousey had to be there for a whole bunch of stuff and everything. And this is this is of course pre what does she expect me to do? Cut off my hair and wash her feet with it, Ronda Rousey, or you know, bringing her woman, you know, her you know woman beating husband on you know, on TV. But as far as just this match. It was perfect. It was perfectly done. I, I can't say enough good shit about it. I could watch it again. I could, I'm probably going to watch it after I film this uh, rest of this video. It was really great because everything was fantastic. And Stephanie tapping out to Ronda. Sure, okay, Stephanie fighting off the armbar was pretty ridiculous at first. But being able to, you know, tap out Stephanie was the right call. Great match. It, it really was. It was the best match of the card. It, easily. 
It might have been, I don't know, well, no, 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 it wasn't the best match of WrestleMania weekend. That, some of that stuff belonged to, uh, to um, you know, TakeOver, especially a couple of the matches on there. But I will argue as far, I would say this beat anything on WrestleMania 33, hands down. Just, it was entertaining, it was just fucking great. Even if <coughs> Rousey is not necessarily endeared herself to a lot of people lately. But we then go to number 13, Mickey versus Trish at Mania 22. Yeah, Mickey getting in trouble for doing, grabbing Trisha's uh, stratosphere and doing the, the, the V symbol thing. And I'm not going to symbol, you know, do that on, on camera. But thankfully, because I don't want to get banned. But also, um, Mickey looked better doing it. The whole point is, this was great. A Chicago crowd just absolutely beating the freaking piss out of Trish. And it wasn't they didn't like Trish. But she had been champion for a huge amount of time, pretty much from, I think, New Year's Revolution 05. And despite being injured for a bit in 2005, like sometime in the summer, didn't get the title taken off of her. I didn't understand that. But the feud they had with her and Mickey was just great. It was great in the commentary, over Son holding in the crowd, chanting, let's go Mickey, and audibly, loudly chanting that. It was absolutely great. I don't, I don't think you really could get anything. You, you couldn't have asked for a better crowd interaction with a match like this. Now, yes, were there a few botches? You're going to get botches in every goddamn match. These women had one of the best WrestleMania matches, like, especially of, you know, the women. I mean, given what they were, you know, the women were essentially allowed or not allowed to do for years. Mickey and Trish went out and just tore it up. And this is way better than the Trish uh, Christy, Christy Hemi match. From you know a year before, but let's be let's be, let's, let's be fair. Christy tried; she shouldn't have been put in that spot. <clears throat> but Mickey and Trish tore it up out there, and Mickey winning is great. I mean, the, the feud continued after this, but it was a perfect culmination. And Mickey winning, my God, the crowd going nuts! It was just great. I mean, that that fucking crowd. I can't get over how great that crowd of Mania Twenty Two was. And then we go to um, and not just because it's Chicago. I mean, you could have put it anywhere in that area, but. Chicago did have, it was, it was certainly a better WrestleMania than they got at 13. But now we go to the same event, because it's Mick Foley versus Edge at Mania 22. Amazing. Just amazing. Amazing hardcore match. Uh, Lita again, you know, getting um, involved. Lita again, you know, Socko with barbed wire wrapped around her mouth. Or uh, barbed wire, you know, barbed wire wrapped around the sock and stuck in her mouth and stuff like that. Um, Edge getting cut open on barbed wire, huge headshots, a table getting set on fire, thumbtacks, all that. Uh, Foley's best match at WrestleMania easily. I thought of ranking Foley's WrestleMania matches from rank, from worst to best, but then I realized, well, he didn't have a lot of great ones, and this would probably would have been it. But it was it, it was great, and it was a great way to give Edge a WrestleMania moment after only having the title, you know, WWE title for like a few weeks in January. <clears throat> it was a great match, though. I encourage you guys to watch this one. Number 11, Angle versus Sean at WrestleMania 21. Yeah, I will agree that this match maybe didn't exceed expectations, but also I think everybody set their expectations a little too high, myself included, but I fucking loved it. The skills the 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 setup the you know just everything just building it up which i admit the build up was here and there i mean they started building it up around i think the royal rumble maybe just a bit before but especially the royal rumbles where it kicked off these guys just cut such a great pace for like nearly 30 minutes is one of one of my favorite matches i i could go watch this and make a watch this one i may just binge a whole bunch of wrestlemania matches sometime later this week but just watching the skills and just everything that these guys did. It was picture perfect. It, it really was. Uh, best match of WrestleMania 21 easily. I would argue maybe the best of even 20. I think it eclipsed anything even in 22. Though I will say 22 is overall their show. Number 10, Brett versus Owens at Mania 10. No, not, you know, uh, symmetrical for, you know, intent, you know, or at least intentionally symmetrical. <coughs> Intentical, um, if you will. Brother versus brother. Great, best opening match in WrestleMania history. And Owen winning. I, just the masterclass of skills that these guys both had and the great ability they had to tell such a great story 
and Owen winning despite Brett winning later in the night. It would just tell a story, you know, for the rest of the summer. It was just great stuff. Really nothing else to say. Number nine, Savage vs. Warrior Mania 7. The, the match itself was here and there. I mean, Savage did everything he could to pull whatever he could out of Warrior. But then you had Miss, Miss Elizabeth. You just had Liz there at ringside because I can't talk, apparently. Um, you had Liz there in the crowd. You had Sherry there because you still had, um, you know, Savage being, you know, Macho King. But after the match, Warrior wins. <coughs> um, even though Savage gave him like 18 elbows, I think it was like five. But then Savage got pinned with one foot. But what I'm, I'm sure Savage signed off on it, but I just hated that. But still, the, the aftermath is a big reason why this is on here. Because you had Sherry beating up Savage. Liz runs down, throws that. You get this big emotional moment. I don't know if they were plants in the crowd. I don't know if they, I, I don't know or whatever. But I was not crying. You shut up. I would, I think we all were, honestly. It was a great moment watching Liz and Savage reunited. Even though, unfortunately, behind the scenes, their marriage was falling apart. But on screen... That was great. The match itself, also, the retirement match, whoever lost would have to retire. It was a big stipulation. It was a big goddamn deal. And on the WrestleMania stage, that counts for something. Even though Warrior never necessarily deserved it. But then, we get, um... <coughs> we get TLC 2 at Mania 17. That's a number 8. And we're getting that. And also... We're getting one that I wrote there, Co, because I realized I put just 24 spots on my list. We're getting Warrior and Hogan there also, because so it's like it's like 8 and 8A. Eight eight. For these reasons, Hogan and Warrior was a great clash of these two, you know, Titans, Behemoths, all that. And even though Hogan kicked out of three and one eights, it was still a great storytelling. You know, a great, great story that they told and everything. And Warrior winning the title, that was shocking. So I talked about that one. TLC 2, it's a car crash with a whole bunch of people involved. Rhino helping Edge and Christian. Lita helping um, the Hardy Boys. And Spike Dudley helping the Dudley Boys. That was a car crash of every, you know, God, of, of, the, of just every possible version that you could come up with. <coughs> and it was just absolutely amazing. It really, really was. See, because I, re I, I realized I looked at my list before and I realized, oh, geez, I wrote something down. Oh, that's what I forgot. So that's why I wrote it the way. I did, because I understand how notepads work. But also, it was just a great match. The TLC 2 was just fantastic. It was the height of, you know, car crash tag team wrestling. Even though TLC 3 on SmackDown was actually really, really good. I also had to throw Hogan and Warrior in there because, look, I may not like either guy. But I can't deny that that is an essential viewing to watch just how you build a main event. Especially between two monster baby faces. They really aren't all that good in the ring. Number 7... Sean versus Flair at Mania 24. Yeah. Yeah. Ric Flair's retirement. I'm sorry. I love you. Sweet chin music. One, two, three. Sean breaking his ribs on that freaking announcer's table. How did how was Sean able to continue that? I really don't understand. It was. Yeah. It was it, it was crazy. It was it was a great match, though. Hugely emotional. One of Flair's best matches that he had in that run in WWE. It, it was just amazing and emotional. And I'm going to move on from it, or otherwise I'm going to start crying about it again. Uh, then we get number six, Brett versus Austin at Mania 13. Goddamn wonderful. It was goddamn wonderful. It was it was Austin turning face, Brett turning, you know, Brett going full heel, Shamrock in the ring. Um, I, I mean, Ken Shamrock, not an actual Shamrock as a referee, that would actually be amazing because I don't know how the hell a uh, plant would know how to do that. <clears throat> but we, you know, we got the visual of Austin blood running down his face, not giving up and passing out from the pain and all the stuff afterwards that indicated Austin was going to be the new guy. And yeah, it was great stuff. Number five, Vince versus Hogan at WrestleMania 19. It was a street fight. And it was barren than it had any right to be. Chair shots to the head. Vince jumping off a ladder. Roddy Piper coming in for some reason. I mean, I know he lived 
not really in Seattle, but he lived, you know, he lived in the Pacific Northwest, but good Lord. Yeah, that was a little odd. It was cool, but it was random. But Hogan winning, beating Vince, all shenanigans. It was still way better than it had any right to be. Same with Vince and Sean, and same with, maybe not the same with Angle, Rousey, Triple H, and Stephanie, but the whole point is, is expectations these this far exceeded it. For two guys that were over over 100 years old combined, and with the way Hogan moved, he might have been 100 years old at that point, it was just great stuff. It really was. And yeah, we're going to include some more Hogan in here. We got Hogan versus Andre at Mania 3. No, not technically sound. Not technically skilled. Big, big moment of Andre putting over Hogan. Big slam. One, two, three. That that visual of Hogan and Andre facing off against each other. It was it was great stuff. It it really, really was. I don't know how in the world <coughs> anybody could say, oh hey, it wasn't this, what or it's like, you know. People people could say it's not a great it's not a great match. Technically speaking, no. It's it's friggin' rotten, but that crowd interaction and the visual of these two guys clashing was great. I will argue that one match was better, and I'll get to that here in just a bit especially on the card, that was a much, much better match. But that spectacle, it drew a lot of people. Maybe not 93,000 people, but it drew a lot of people to the Silverdome. Not, it wasn't the Superdome, Hogan. You were in the Silverdome in 87 and in the Superdome in 2014. Still, that was a great visual of those two guys facing off. Number three, Becky versus Sasha versus Charlotte. Mania 32. Best women's match in WrestleMania history so far. So far, we don't know what uh, is going to happen to WrestleMania 35. So if something happens to WrestleMania 35 that's better, then you can retroactively come into the comments and say, ha, oh, you got it wrong, even though I can't see into the future and I don't know how great those matches are going to be. But great stuff. Yes, Rick getting involved wasn't necessarily all that great, but it was all these three women saying, we're going to show you what the fuck we can do. And they did. And yeah, Charlotte won. Good argued. Maybe Becky should have won or Sasha should have won. But still, the match, great stuff. The women just tore the goddamn house down. And given how WrestleMania 32 was about 18,000 hours, this match went by in a flash. It was also great. And then we go to two more. Taker versus Sean, Mania 25 at number two. How could I not put this here? 30 minutes, these guys, tear these guys just tearing into each other. Taker not dying on that dive. Sean kicking out of a tombstone and that great visual of Taker uh, just, you know, all shocked and everything. Um, and then finally, the second tombstone. Just the fact that these two guys took everybody on a roller coaster ride. My favorite WrestleMania match of all time. But not number one, because one other match, that, you know, essential match you need to view. Savage versus Steamboat Mania 3. I don't need to say why, because it's great. Just watch it. You'll understand the one of the best WrestleMania matches ever. <clears throat> Some people would rank this above Sean and Taker, and I wouldn't blame you guys. But anyway, that's my list. So do you agree? Do you disagree with what I said? Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I am John Ripplin. I will see you soon.